Hey guys, this is Torna and today we have Marrow's teasers. Uh, as you can see, I am all well lit up. Hopefully, you know, the green screen's working well. Everything, I am pretty excited about this. We've just completely kind of moved around our whole computer room and got new furniture and everything. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, but yeah, we've got the Marrow's teasers today. Foundations, foundations reveal start later this week, I think it is. Uh, and it's, I don't know, it's a set that I'm kind of excited to see what they kind of bring out as well as what they reprint because, you know, some of the reprints they could have here are ones that are just going to, you know, shape, uh, essentially it's meant to shape standard for the next, like, what, five years, I think it is, as well as, you know, hopefully kind of drop down the price of some of those that are more expensive and harder to find and stuff. But we got the Marrow's teasers, uh, which are essentially each time a new set's coming out right before Mark Rosewater will post a whole bunch of teasers about stuff that's coming. Uh, and, you know, some of it's very interesting. Some of it's like, yeah, okay, this could be literally anything. But I like going through them and kind of showing you guys them and giving you my best guesses. I will say that, like, I give my best guesses here and I make sure that, you know, I answer each of them. I'm not going to go into them and just be like, oh, I don't know what this is. I want to make sure that you guys have like, you know, the best information possible and make sure you guys, you know, subscribe, make sure you share the video around all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff supports the channel, helps us grow. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers at the moment. We're like, you know, 50 away from 8,000 at the moment. Maybe I should, maybe I need to do a big giveaway at 10,000 or something like that to celebrate. Um, I've got some stuff up here that I'd love to give away because I'm not using it and it's really cool like magic stuff. So maybe we can do that or something. Um, so yeah, I, I well, let's get into it because, you know, I, I'm so excited about this. So first of all, we've got the five iconic creatures. Each are going to show up on multiple cards. So the uh, five iconic creatures, uh, one for each, uh, each creature creature each color uh so for white you've got angels now we do know the angels that were in it and we do do know that either giada gets a new card or probably a reprint either way because we've seen her on the art uh we've got you know dragons showing up here hydras sphinxes and demons those are the five iconic uh creature types for the different colors so seeing multiple of these is going to be good. Um, I know that we've got like jumpstart coming too, and it wouldn't surprise me if we know we've got a Hydra jumpstart or something. We've got two monocolor reprints, each of a different color that together win you the game. Now, I think that one of them is going to be Laboratory Maniac. I think Laboratory Maniac is like a, a pretty easy, safe guess. The other one I'm not sure about. I thought Demonic Consultation potentially because of the fact that Demonic Consultation got new art for uh, Mystery Booster 2. Um which, you know, when Mystery Booster 2 is meant to be like this reprint set and stuff, it, it was a bit weird that it got new art. Now, potentially, you know, there was a reason behind it that I just missed and stuff, but I think that either, like, I think that this could potentially make sense, right? Like, to me, at least, maybe you guys disagree. I'm hoping it's, like, like it has to be different colors, so uh, hopefully it's not, like, Thassa's Oracle or something like that. We've got some creature tokens in this set. So a 1-1 one, one white rabbit, you know, that could be literally anything. 2-1 blue ninjas. So I wonder if there's going to be like a ninja uh, jump start too, or how exactly it's going to work. We know that uh, Kaito is going to be in it. So maybe from there. We've got 3-3 three, three green raccoons. So currently the only card that makes those is Gormon's Talent, which I don't know if that would be printed in there. Like it could be, right? If they want to use this to kind of shape standard for the next five years, reprinting stuff that you know, people love and from recent sets makes sense. We've got Descent to the Dragons. Uh, I put that up as an example for this 4-4 Red Dragon. There's a lot of dread, Red Dragons, so could be anything. And then a copy that's a nightmare. I was thinking about this one, and the one I thought of was like Chainer, Dementia Master, and all the other different kind of Chainers and stuff that kind of bring stuff back from the graveyard. Maybe they've got a way to be able to copy things from graveyard or something. There's also... Nightmare Shepherd that creates like essentially token copies that are one ones um, of creatures like after it exiles them. So maybe something like that too. A character for one of the most popular online magic stories. I think that has to be Alicia. Uh, we're very, very, very unlikely that we get a new Alicia card outside of something like a Modern Horizons or Foundations here um, because these ones don't follow the storyline. So Alicia kind of being in here makes sense. It's one of the kind of 
big magic storylines that when people are looking to get into the lore, it's recommended to them. So definitely, like, I think Alicia would make a huge amount of sense here, especially given that she's such a huge character within, um, like, within the community and still only has one card, I believe. We've got an 812 creature with Ward 4. Now, I don't know what this one's going to be. I chose a couple examples of characters, uh, like creatures that had Ward 4, but we've never had something that's quite up to 812. 8 to 8 was the closest, or, you know, we've got the Sailor's Bane here, which is 7 7. I don't know. This could be literally anything, um, but like I wanted to kind of show that it's likely going to be something really expensive. Um, I don't think it's going to be a legendary. I think I'll say that, like, I don't think it's going to be a legendary unless it's got a big kind of restriction on what it can do. A creature with seven evergreen keywords. Now, um, I believe someone on Reddit pointed it out. A chroma has seven. We've got flying, first strike, vigilance, uh, trample, haste, protection from black and protection from red. Technically, that is seven different evergreen keywords. Um, but, you know, something like that or like, you know, you've got Zop is a tulpa um that's the kind of thing where it's got like you know a whole bunch of keywords kind of shoved into a creature definitely you know uh maybe like the tulpa a, a evolved version of them who knows we've got a magic invitational winners card that gets reprinted and no not the most powerful one so the two that came to me was dark confident easy um and solemn simulacarium i did not know that solemn was a uh magic invitationals winner but this thing is reprinted to heck right like so much um in, in nearly every pre-con right so it would make sense that they might want to bring it into standard as like a kind of standard for the standard for a bit all right we've got counters that are going to be in the set so I don't believe a bait counter exists at the moment. We've got fellowship. So to me, fellowship, I was thinking of like the promise of loyalty kind of thing where, you know, people put a fellowship counter on something and then sacrifice everything else or, you know, the other things can't attack. Who knows? We've got incubation. There's not currently incubation tokens. However, that, you know, reminded me of incubators. We know that there's going to be Phyrexians in here. At least, you know, they've in, in a slide later, they'll talk about Phyrexians um, and Eldrazi and stuff showing up here. So this could be like a, a type of Phyrexian doing it. Revival counters, we've already seen on the new Nine Lives Familiar, where, you know, it's essentially when it dies, it had a revival counter on it, bring it back with one fewer of it. And then we've got Soul, which uses a few different times. Obscure Ascendancy is one that definitely could be it, or, you know, some other ones, or it could just be a new card as well. And then Stash was used on the Glittering Stockpile, as well as used on one of the uh, enchantments from Bloomborough. We've got a card that's in the top 10 cards. Uh, Marrow gets signed, uh, asks to sign, gets reprinted. So doubling season apparently is a big meme with him um, where he always signs it twice because, you know, it's a doubling season. And it's also the one of the cards that he's most proud of designing. However, he also said that doubling season is not likely to show up in a premiere set just because it's too strong for standard and interacts a little bit too favorably with Planeswalkers. So this was the only one that I could think of for it. Um, and, you know, that he could always have backtracked on this or changed it. However, we do know that there's going to be a lot of Planeswalkers in this or more Planeswalkers than a normal set. Like... They've already shown reprints for, you know, the five different colored planeswalkers, I think. Maybe they only showed three. I think they showed three today, actually. Ajani, Liliana, and Vivian. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to tell if it's going to be. Um, I, I don't know what cards you sign, so it's hard to kind of guess beyond this. All right, so the next one you hear is more deciduous mechanics get used in this set than any previous non-spiral time block Premier set. So a deciduous keyword refers to keywords, keyword actions, or mechanics that are not evergreen. They show up time for essentially from time to time. So evergreen show up all the time. Deciduous is like the step down from that. So if you have a look at these ones, like you got clue tokens, colored artifacts, we've got convoke, curses, cycling, transforming double face. Those are a few examples. So 
this is not one that I could show you an example of or anything like that, but essentially, you know, that's going to be, it's kind of feels like Modern Horizons 3, where they tried to do something very similar, where they brought back a whole bunch of old mechanics. I assume it's going to be something kind of like that, which is pretty exciting. I'm, I'm very interested to see what they do there. All right, so then they've got some rules text that will be showing up on cards. So the first one is this spell costs one less to cast for each cat you control. So we know that there's going to be like a whole bunch of cats. One of the foundations um, starter boxes has cats in it. We know Ajani's in it as well with this awesome new uh, borderless art here. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing, you know, that I can really say about this beyond more cats like you know it's obviously cats aren't just going to be within the starter box they're also going to be in the actual set which is pretty cool uh we've got you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game so this could be a reprint of like platinum angel or angel's grace and i'm i think that a reprint of angel's grace could definitely be it right like if you've got a whole bunch of angels Platinum Angels, unlikely because of the ways that people cheated out and everything like that and make use of it really easily. But Angel's Grace is one that I could easily see keep being reprinted here, or it could be a new version of either of them. We've got Target Instant or Sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. So Snapcaster Mage is obviously the most famous kind of version of this, and that is actually one of the um one of the invitational winners cards as well so you know that could be fulfilled two of these prompts here however you know we've done it before like archmage's new is one from um from otj and i thought this was a pretty good option for it as well right like where it gives um like flashback but then it also gets flashback zero if like a condition's met it's really interesting i, I like this one a lot we've got creatures you control get plus 10 plus 10 so this is I don't know if this is going to be like a, um, a instant or sorcery that gives, you know, that until end of turn, or it could be like an enchantment. So I was thinking like colossification, like a, a kind of a sub version of that, like a, a lower version of that. But instead of it being like, you know, just one creature, all your creatures get it. Um, they did something similar with what the, the triad within, um, within Assassin's Creed, where it set all your base powers to 9-9, I think it was. So, you know, I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. So it could be a really expensive enchant that kind of buffs up your whole team. We've got a deck can, can have any number of cards names. So currently we've got one green option, one blue, one red, one white, and then three black. Now, I would not put it past them to kind of reprint like a Relentless Rats or something like that in here, or, you know, move a Templar Knight, like Templar Knights from the Assassin's Creed set, but it doesn't need to stay in Assassin's Creed. Like this is, this is a name they could easily use outside of that. I think that's going to be a new one though. And I have a feeling that it's going to be like an instant or sorcery this time. Um, I don't know, maybe like a blue one or something. I think that could be interesting, like some kind of weird countery one where you know, you counter something and do something else with it or something like that. I don't know. There's, there's lots of cool ways they could do this. I doubt it's going to be black because, you know, two, they've got three options already. Um, Temple and I getting a reprint wouldn't surprise me though. We've got, and then exile all other nightmare tokens you control. So there was like the, we saw the nightmare token copies before. Um, as I said, like, you know, Chainer could be this or Nightmare Shepherd, either one, something like those version things. Um, like a new version of either of these two wouldn't surprise me. We've got whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a token that's a copy of this creature. So we've had a bunch of ones that create tokens whenever you draw two cards. So like Alandra, Min. Um, so this is one that's like a, probably a, it would be a non-legendary that then essentially is cloning itself each time. It's, it's some really cool stuff they could do with that. Very likely it's a blue or um, maybe like blue green or something, who knows. And then we've got double the number of each kind of counter. So we have Arna that does this from Modern Horizons 3, but the first Tyrannical War also had this on it. Uh, and if they, you know, we're looking back at 40K stuff and potentially looking at reprinting some of that stuff, and, you know, making it more accessible and stuff. That's a, an easy way they could do that. We've got, you may pay B rather than this pay this spell's mana cost if there are 13 or more creatures on the battlefield. So I, this is the only one here that I'm like, don't know. Um, 
I was thinking like a a zombie lord of some kind, like a zombie commander or just a legendary creature. Um or it probably is not. It, it, okay, so let's let's go. I don't think it could be a legendary because otherwise, this could be like cheated out from from the command zone easily. So it's not going to be a legendary. I think. I think this is going to be an instant or sorcery. Um, obviously, you know it's pay B, so pay black, which makes me think zombies. Maybe like a zombie. Um, or maybe, maybe it's a board wipe. I think it's a board wipe actually. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be a board wipe of some kind for black, like a kind of like um, uh, what like a blasphemous fact kind of thing. Yeah, that would make sense for me. All right, then we've got draw a card for each different mana value among non-land permanents you control. So we saw something like this with Kian, who creates uh, puts plus ones on a fractal based on that um thing. We've got sudden insight, which does exactly that. Draw a card for each one, except that's from your graveyard instead of on the field. And same with Oscar, actually. Oscar's from the graveyard. So look at these two. You know, these two are both graveyard stuff. We've got Kian, though, that's based off of Exile, actually, with Exile with Study. So one that's based off of the battlefield is interesting. Um, we had like the coven mechanic for green white from oh, I can't remember what set that was from. Um oh like vow or something like that, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and you know, something like that, maybe with coven mechanics, like similar to coven mechanic, that would make sense. And so then we had some creature type lines. So I didn't really focus too much on these because I didn't think it was kind of, you know, worth it. Um, besides, you know, saying, hey, look, there's an Eldrazi in here. So yeah, there's, hey, look, there's some Eldrazi in here. We've got a Hyena Rogue as well. Um, I don't think we've seen Hyena before, or at least not very often. We've got Spiders, Elemental Hydras, Bear Demons. Now the Bear Demon one, I'm actually really excited about that one. Um, there could be so many cool things with that. We've got Legendary Creature Zombie Warlock here too. Uh, and then we've got some names. So Bolt Wave, maybe some kind of redirect, like Bolt Bend kind of thing. We've got Electro Duplicate. So most likely an Is It Clone spell. That would make sense. Fishing pole and equipment that, what, gives a fish or maybe has gift attached to it or something. Uh, goblin negotiation, some mind control stuff maybe, hair apparent, some rabbit stuff. We've got homunculus horde. I, I don't even know. These are really hard to kind of guess as well. Midnight stack sounds freaking hilarious. I love that one. Um, yeah. Is, what do you, what are the, is coming to your mind from these ones? Um, I think the one I'm most interested in is seeing is the Midnight Stack one. I think that could be really interesting. Um, but that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Um, yeah, and let me know what you guys think of the new lighting and stuff. My my secondary monitor is now over here rather than like over that side, which it used to be. So I, I'm looking over my other monitor and like getting confused. But yeah, anyway, have a great day and goodbye.